Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the New Jersey Fiber Exchange, or NJFX, virtual press conference on the company's opening of its first Tier 3 co-location campus. Can everyone hear me all right? Okay, wonderful. Go ahead and raise your hands if you're having any audio issues. I'm Jamie Scott Okutaya, JSA, the PR firm on record for NJFX. And we're here at, and thankful for you to join us at the NJFX new campus. A couple of quick notes on logistics before we begin. First, please refrain from any questions from you until after his brief presentation. Two, if you'd like to ask questions verbally, go ahead and click on the orange hand icon and that will raise your virtual hand. We will then uh, unmute you and you can go ahead and ask your question. Three, if you'd like to type in any questions that you may have, you can do so in the question field. And we'll read it out loud and have Gil respond to it accordingly. Four, if you have any other questions or suggestions, feel free to chat to me or the NJFX team right in that chat box. All right, um, we will be sending you the slides that Gil reviews right after this call. So uh, don't, don't worry about taking notes, we'll, we'll send those over to you. And we do have a half hour scheduled, so let's just go ahead and get right, right into it. Let me introduce you. My pleasure to introduce you to Mr. Gil Santaliz. He is the founder and chief executive officer of NJFX. Brief background on Gil. Gil was previously the CEO and founder and managing member of Four Connections LLC, a Metro Fiber Network provider he founded in 2001. Under Gil's leadership, Four Connections pioneered the deployment of carrier neutral dark fiber services for both New Jersey and New York City. And in 2008, Gil successfully exited the business in a preemptive transaction with Optimum Light Path, a wholly owned subsidiary of Cablevision. Prior to founding Four Connections, Gil had over two decades of communications and industry expertise including the general manager of a joint venture company between GPU, Telecom, and Telergy. He also had several management positions in the Williams Company, PSE, and G. And of course, he began his career at MCI. To tell us more about his most recent endeavors, notably his great campus here in Wall Township, New Jersey, it's my honor to introduce you to Mr. Gil Santelis. Gil? Great, thank you, and welcome to Wall, New Jersey. Um, it seems just like yesterday that um, we sold four connections to Cablevision like that and um, had an incredible team, a team of individuals that went on to do great things as well. Um, two of the members of my past team, Enzo Clemente, Mike Severett, now include Jim Martini, went on to form a company called Cross River that builds dark fiber today in New Jersey. But back then when we started the business of dark fiber in New Jersey, there weren't many of us doing that. And what we found is as we grew, there were certain parts of New Jersey and New York that needed fiber infrastructure. And one of the areas that was left out and was considered untouchable was International Cable Landing Station. So when I sold the business in 2008, I knew that that had to be fixed. Um, I'm not going to say I didn't enjoy my life in the last eight years. Uh, the first five years, I really focused on my family, um, working on my golf game. But after that, I realized that there was a need in the marketplace. And the marketplace needed to have fiber infrastructure, not brought to places where traditional cables go to after the land, but actually go to where they actually originate. The first and last stop in the United States. So today we sit in Wall, New Jersey, where Tata's cables come in from Europe. Two cables, TGM1, TGM2. And soon to be, we have the Seabrass cable coming into Brazil. It's the first cable ever from Brazil to North America landing direct. Traditionally, they stop in Florida, but they hit the Caribbean. The Seabrox cable, of which Sparkle has brought some capacity, is going to be the express cable going down to Brazil. So, I flip my slide over, I'll give you a quick overview of the building that we're sitting in today. This building is a purpose-built facility. It's not a Bamberger's that's committed into a Telco hotel. 
an office building in Lower Manhattan with Blaze, Telco Hotel. It's not a building that was something else. This building was built to be a carrier neutral tier three facility. Now, what does that mean? We're sitting in a building that has 12 inch thick walls with concrete and steel. We've got rooftop units with 90 ton of ceiling times three on the roof with a million pounds of capacity. We've got generators that can go six across with 2.5 megawatts, a 10 megawatt design facility. That's something that's never been done before at a cable landing stations because traditionally these cables come into the country that's they're gonna land and they go on to somewhere else where they get that capacity picked up. But this campus now, this NJFX campus consists of the following thing. The building we sit in, tier three site, that will help Tata have its customers be able to perform better services now with this building that's located with it. Um, we also have the actual landing station that Tata still owns. We also have the NJFX meeting room, which is operated independently of Tata, which allows anyone to connect to anyone. And that's the facility we're in, the campus that we're on, both buildings combined. The next slide shows you an idea of how this really works. And that's the job that NJF is trying to accomplish. We want the world to understand that, you know, these cables shouldn't be mysterious in terms of how they cross the ocean. They shouldn't be mysterious in terms of how you get access to it. We've made it good and clear for our carrier customers with Light Path, Light Tower, Venesis, Windstream, Veo to be able to come here directly, provide their customers now access to the cable landing stations, whether it's Brazil the destination or whether it's the UK. They need to know, and their customers need to know, how does this really work? The idea of having a failure in one location, somewhere in this country, somewhere in this area, and everyone going down is unacceptable. We've had the issues of past of 9-11, we've had the issues of standing, and we all know how vulnerable we become. 20, 30 years ago, it was electricity. Today, I tell you, it's communication. If we don't have internet access and communications, we have a problem in our country. We depend on everything that we do for it. So the next slide kind of walks through our value proposition for the marketplace. There's a couple of ways that we accommodate our customers. The first is by allowing the carrier of choice that they would like to have design a route that goes from their location, whether they're going to pick the traffic up in Sea Pocket, or they're going to pick it up in Ashburn, Virginia, or they're going to pick it up in Chicago, they're going to pick it up at the New York Stock Exchange, if it's in New Jersey, wherever it is they want to start, we want to say work with your carriers and get direct access to where we sit today. Where we sit today, you can easily connect to these subsea cable systems. As a matter of fact, we've made it an effort to have the other cables that land within two and three miles of this facility they also now are going to come here as well. When you land here from the destination of called the New York Stock Exchange, call it NASDAQ, you can now decide if Paris your destination, Sao Paulo, the UK, or the Caribbean. And there's no more mystery. We're in a secure site with redundant carriage without any of those services. The other part that we do as well is I've got many friends from the Nana community that I've spent some time with and I've been to some of their events and I've sat in meetings where they said, why are we all sitting here in Lower Manhattan Theater? We service 22 million people from this Lower Manhattan location. Could we pick another place to peer? A place that possibly is meant for peering and has access to potentially international as well? We're not. We would love to host those folks. We would love to create a peering fabric in this facility that allows us to have our internet society, internet nanog folks be able to safely, cost effectively connect to each other. The model that we've chosen is one that Telex first embraced. Um, when they first started, it was a real estate play. The way they viewed the marketplace was, you're renting space from me. Whether it's a rack, or whether it's a home run cable, or space on a meeting room cabinet that we have for you. It's a very simple model. We don't compete with our customers, and we don't charge you every time, every month, you think to someone else. As a matter of fact, we celebrate when you connect with people. One of the things that we've done in our facility is we've created a fiber vault room we take a picture of every splicer that comes to the facility. We call them the unsung heroes. These are folks that connect the networks around the world, but no one notices them. And the way they connect those networks and those good splices make it so much easier for things that have a bandwidth they're looking for, whether it's 100 megabytes, 100 gigabytes, or terabytes. We have Corian in the building today. They've lit up their network. They're doing lit, lit services now with Light Path. Um, and they're promoting today and tomorrow 
You can do a terabyte in a single appliance. It's about three inches thick, three are you. So the world's changing, we're adapting. What we're trying to really do is make sure that our country and other countries always have international capacity. We don't have to rely on traditional legacy infrastructure buildings or having to cross the Holland Tunnel twice to be able to get their international capacity. Um, the last slide it is, is, is basically the one I'm looking at. It's breaking traditional communications infrastructure mode. I kind of said this before, but what we're really doing is saying you don't have to do things the old way. There's a new option for a new solution. You can pick a carrier, you can come to our facility, we can help you connect with subsea providers. You can, you can take off the mystery of how communication works in our country, other countries. We make the introductions in the room we're sitting in here, our conference room, with international characters, Sparkle, um, international characters, with GlobeNet, Brock, and say, let's walk around, let's sit around the table and talk a little bit about what we're going to do with it. We make sure that the customer understands I provide subsea traffic, but in this case, I don't do in-country traffic. Here's what I do it for you. We're opening up the communication to be able to have people describe exactly what they're going to do. So, in summary, we'd like to have you come down for a visit. Um, we're having our grand opening tomorrow. Um, commissioning happens in the next 45 days. We decided to celebrate with an icon of speed, Mario Andretti. Uh, Tata Communications has been great supporting us with a Formula One uh, virtual reality machine, and we kind of teased about this. We do have 10 Formula One helmets, and we thought we'd have Mario Andretti go first and set the bar. And anyone who can beat Mario Andretti gets a, a signed helmet by Mario Andretti saying, you beat me today in the Formula One demo machine. Um, we'd have some fun with it, but again, please come down and join us for the event. Thank you. And thank you, Gil, for uh, that wonderful, wonderful presentation. We will be opening it up for questions now. So you can go ahead and click that hand icon, and we'll call on you for an audio question, or you can type in your questions in the question field. Uh, we are we are uh, looking and, and watching to see if there's any questions. We do have one question here. Uh, Gil, if you could uh, tell us who is your primary customer base? So, um, as you know, facilities like this, we can't always describe the names of the customers, but I give you categories. And obviously, the OTTs are a big player in this marketplace. Um, the OTTs have realized that this is an important place to be. And before NJFX got here, they were already here. So as part of our mission, we inherited nine customers in the building day one. We've added on two new backup providers in the last uh, six months, Light Path and uh, Light Power. And Windstream is offering their services, those I can share with you. But enterprise customers, dark side providers, those are all the ones that we have in our facility. Wonderful. What, wonderful. And can you talk to us a little bit more about eliminating the need for traditional backhaul? So, so think of it this way. When a cable comes across the ocean, the cost can be anywhere from half a billion to a billion dollars. It then transitions over to a pair of fibers that goes on to the parkway, the turnpike, over the Holland Tunnel. So the cost comparison and the kind of care that goes into that cable with the one across the ocean doesn't make any sense. So what we're now saying is, when a billion dollar cable shows up in this country, why don't we have eight, nine, ten different cables picking it up? Why don't we have ten routes leaving this building? One of the things I did is I made sure that I got a company like Joe Max involved that does a lot of the engineering design work for all the carriers that I mentioned before. And the third carrier comes to this building with facilities, we make sure to say, can you walk us through your route? And if you're looking very similar to someone else, we're going to recommend you take a different route. Because why have a situation where you have one pole, one manhole, and a catastrophe can happen in that one manhole, and we're going to lose all connectivity. So what we've basically done is said, no longer a pair of fibers is enough to be cable landing station back to New York City or somewhere else. You better have several different cables managed by seven different operators. And therefore, how they integrate and how they operate is completely different. Right, right. Um, any other questions? Go ahead and... Uh... Uh, type away or, or raise your hand. 
One last question here. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the exact location of the campus and how we might get in touch with you if you're if we're interested in taking up space? Sure. When you come here, you'll see there isn't any names or logos outside. So we just three locations. Um, the address on our website is 1410 Wall Church Road. We're completely fenced in and guarded 24-7. Um, we're a critical infrastructure, site, critical infrastructure site for New Jersey and the federal government, so visitors have to be planned to come to the site. We are having an event, and the event is allowing us to have guests for one day, but traditionally we do not allow guests uh, to come here without having prior um, written notice and we check them an ID. But uh, again, for the press, tomorrow is an inspection day. We will have wall police supporting us, security supporting us, we will check IDs, we will have cameras, and we're welcome to have people come take an inside look at what a data center looks like 30 days before commission. Wonderful. So if folks are looking to get more information and how they can reach out, connect, and make those appointments, if they're not coming here on your grand opening tomorrow, uh, they would check out njfx.net. That's njfx, as in New Jersey Fiber Exchange.net. Gil, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. As always, Jamie, I've enjoyed our history together. And obviously, since 2003, I've worked with you, and it's nice to work with you again. Thank you, Gil. And yeah, your connections was a wonderful run. And yeah. glad to be back, part of the team for NJFX. Um, and if you guys have any more questions, oh, wait, I'm sorry, we do have one more question. Uh, this is by John Manoff. Um, John's asking, subseat cables have been around a long time. Why is now the right time for this to happen? Good question, John. Thank you. Sure. Um, you know, it should have always been done this way. No one was thinking about how to do it. And getting facilities near a cable landing station is not easy because no one did this kind of planning. We got lucky in this case. Tyco built the second building foundation. We just put the building up. So when Tyco uh, went bankrupt, there to build the second building, Tata didn't make the investment. We partnered to buy the land from Tata and put this facility up. So really, we have to thank Tyco for thinking it through, through having a second facility there. Um, and then Tata was, you know, insightful to realize the value of doing this and realize that carrier neutral makes more sense and let us buy the land from them and interconnect the two buildings together. And a little more detail is the buildings are at campus because we have four POEs on both. I get three interconnect and then two bypass each other. So it's really a network uh, haven for those that like to manage the risk. And then the last thing I would la add too is we've seen an explosion in transatlantic capacity requirements, and now we're seeing lots of new cables coming across the ocean for the first time since 2001. The timing is perfect. Well, timing is right. The facility is here. And we're really looking forward to uh, watching you rock it out in true uh, NJFX Hill Santa Lee style. So um, thank you. Thank you. And uh, without any other questions, uh, thank you again, everyone, for participating. And thank you for joining us here at the NJFX Virtual Press Conference. Have a good day. Thank you.